Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We're on episodes four, five, and six of Ace of the Diamond. I was really pleasantly surprised with last week's uh, start to this series. Those first three episodes, I didn't know what I was expecting uh, in terms of being a sports anime, but I really, really enjoyed those episodes, especially towards the end when we get that kind of realization that uh, Sawamura has an uphill battle <laughs> with this team, with uh, his team here. He's got an uphill battle to try to not only um, make the team basically off the roster, but to keep that position. And so I really like that. I like the idea of his roommates. I like the idea of these characters. Uh, Kazuya, oh my gosh, I love him. Miyuki Kazuya. And uh, yeah, it's just a really cool cast so far. It was a nice set of introduction episodes. Just a really well-rounded introduction to the series. And so I'm very curious to know what we're going to get after that. So as I said last reaction, I'm going to be watching episodes 4, 5, and 6. It is hot today. I am sweating. That's all right. <laughs> but um, I'm going to watch episodes 4, 5, and 6 straight through and do commentary for that. And then afterwards, we'll come together. I've got my notepad and my notes to make, my pen to make notes. And then I'll come back and kind of talk about all three episodes as a whole. So this episode is called Are You Like Me? Episode 4. And so I'm really curious to see. We, we've done the introductions. We've got the stage set. So I'm curious. Obviously, Sawamura has got to work his way up with the coach to where the coach is respecting of him. So I'm curious what the next move is. But yeah, I'm excited, y'all. I hope y'all are too. But with that being said, we are going to jump right in and start episode 4 here of Ace of the Diamond here in 5... Four, three, two, one, and let's go. Oh my gosh, that was a good set of episodes. That really was. That built nicely from the first three. Oh man, Sawamura, I he has a very Sakuragi um, from Slam Dunk vibe, especially his laugh where he's just not deterred by anything. And I love that. Like, I like the coach says, even in the face of utter defeat, you just consider it a challenge and you just keep going beyond that. Like, like how can you not be inspired by this little guy? Like, well, he's not little. But um, I really like his character and his optimism. Um, very Sakuragi from Slam Dunk-like. Um, but let's go through these notes here. I got uh, our characters, Haruno. Haruno, this sweet girl. Oh my gosh, I love her. She's so klutzy and she tries so hard. I love when they called him out the field, she had the bag of ice and she was like, oh God. I'm like, dude, you are perfect. You are a match made in heaven with our Sawamura. You really are. She's so, I love that everybody else laughed at Sawamura's like display of optimism, but she like was inspired by it. And her like constantly going up to the other managers and being like, did you see that? Oh my gosh. Like she's so... Um, so sweet and kind. Um, but we get introduced to a lot of characters in this set of episodes. And we've got Yuki. I really like Yuki, the number three, the batter. He's got like the, and they all have like their own different traits in the game. Like Yuki's is he's very intense and intimidating and has this like stare down with the pitchers. I really like that. Um, obviously Kuromochi, our, our delinquent that is the roommate of Sawamura, Kurmochi's fast. He's a very fast runner, so he could probably steal really easy and run the bases really easy as well. Um, Isashiki, he's the one that has like the yellowish hair that's polite to the bat and then like starts yelling and gets all fired up real easily. Uh, there's him. Tamba. Tamba, the number one, the ace, the pitcher with an injury. So I'm assuming we're going to get more on Tamba and his injury. Uh, as the series goes on, but he's our main guy that's in a slump um, that needs to kind of revive himself from everything. So those are our upperclassmen. And then obviously Asuka, um, who's there at the end, that finally gets to talk. He gets his reprieve from his uh, silence cr or decree there. Um, I like that he's like, I've worked for three weeks to get back in the first string. Like, I'm not going to lose to y'all. Um, but then we have our two first years that we're introduced to this episode. Oh my gosh, I love them both. Uh, first is Haruichi, our pink-haired first year. And I got him confused because in the game there's another pink-haired person on the team. I'm like, that's not confusing at all. You should have made his hair purple or something. So they were a little different. 
But there is a second or third year that has pink hair, and then Haruichi is the first year that his bangs are covering up his eyes. We can't see his eyes. Um, but he's the one that cheers Sawamura to run the base, and he's the one that cheers him on, and he's like his first supporter of the first years. I like this Haruichi kid. He kind of reminds me of, like, Tendo from uh, Haikyuu, where he's just kind of, like, a little crazy. And he, like, tried to do the special signs to fake him out, the fake signals, and, of course, it backfired because Sawamura's uh, a butterhead and was like, oh, what? What are you doing? He's like, dang it, you ruined my trick. Um, but I really like Haruichi a lot. But honestly, of all these new characters, Furuya is the most intriguing. Satoru Furuya, the kid with the pitch that's too strong for a catcher. Except maybe Miyuki. Uh, Furuya really wants Miyuki to be his partner. Like, for real, guys. I like, what I like about Furuya's character, and kind of Haruichi too, is they're both very shameless. They both, which Haruichi gets a little bit embarrassed when his fake signals and stuff get called out. But Haruichi seems pretty um, open-minded, not easily deterred. But Furuya is like stone cold, like, I'm not embarrassed by anything. What? Like, I really like that about Furuya. And he's like, I'm just stating facts. I'm going to be on the first string. And he makes it with his pitching. Um, I'm going to be really curious to see if him and Miyuki kind of become a team in these next couple episodes because I don't think Sawamura is making first string. Um, I think he might make second string for now, but I don't think he's making first string yet. Um, there was another player, uh, Kamakawi, Kamakari, that we didn't really get to see much of. Um, but yeah, and the second pink haired kid came in there. I'm curious to know them. And then there's June was one of the players too. But I like this introduction of all these characters. And I like some of the thematic things that are going down with these episodes. So there's one, in one instance, we have the idea that um, in the classroom, they talk about how the, the teacher and the other students, the other first years point out, you know, this is a famous national winning team. They have a reputation to uphold. And so they kind of get on to Sawamura for sleeping in class because they're like, he ain't even on the team. He's in training. Like, we have a reputation. Like, don't be dragging us down through the mud. Which is funny because then we cut to the dilemma of the team, which is, lo and behold, they don't have a good pitcher. They don't have a good pitcher. A solid ace pitcher this year. Tamba's recovering from his injury. None of the other second or third years are doing quite enough to cement them as a, as a solid team. So I'm s assuming Faria and Sawamura are going to come in and do some pinch pitching, maybe. maybe definitely Furuya. I don't know about Sawamura yet because he's not on the first string. He's still... Maybe he'll get to second string. We'll see. But I like that. Um, oh, my gosh. The coach. The coach being a pitcher is very, very telling. Like, you can tell that's why he relates to Sawamura and Furuya and the others because he was a pitcher himself. And I love the bath scene where he's just sitting in the bath, this ripped man just sitting in the bath last. And Sawamura's like, I'm going to die. Oh, my God. Shades. Coach Shades. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm curious if we'll ever go back to that fence, him pitching over the fence. I wonder if we'll ever go back to that because I would like to see him pitch the ball over the fence and the coach be like, hmm, you did develop. Look at you. Look at you. Um, but, yeah, the idea of... I hadn't even thought of this. The idea of Furuya and um, Sawamura being rivals. Because they really are. He's like, Fur like Furuya just shoving him over to sit next to uh, Miyuki. He's like, I want you to be my catcher. And, and Sawamura's like, wait, I'm supposed to be the one that's joining the pitching team, not you. And I like this rivalry developing between them. That's a really cool... I hadn't even thought of that. Um, but it makes sense that out of these 100 players... You've got 20 that are in the first string, and then I'm assuming you have 20 more that are in the second string, and the rest don't really participate. They just practice and are part of the team um, with the hopes of rising in the ranks. But I like that idea of the rivalry between them to try to keep getting better. I like that. And that's really... Because, you know, sometimes, like, I've noticed, like, in Haikyuu and other shows, you have that rivalry between players, but it's just like a personal... Rivalry. It's not doesn't really have an agenda or a point to it, right? It's literally just we're rivals, we're friends, we're rivals. We make each other better in the game, but there's no like reward 
for that rivalry. It's just you guys play better as a team and it helps you guys win a game. With this, my point is, there is a reward. Your rivalry is going to make you better, which is going to earn you a spot on the team. Like with basketball, with volleyball, with those and running, those sports anime that I've seen so far, there's only been like, you know, 20 players total, if that. So your team, you're not really vying for a spot on the team. I mean, you're going to get to play no matter what, right? Like even in Haikyuu, um, Sugawara in Haikyuu wasn't always the first starting player as setter, but he still got to play and come in clutch, right? Same thing with your team in Slam Dunk. Yeah, Kaguri wasn't a starter all the time, but he still came in and played. Same thing with your running team and run with the wind. Those players were all needed. With this, there's 100 players. So yeah, when they said some of these first years never get to play a game, I believe it. They just, they sit out all year with the hopes of next year playing. And that's very true to life. You know, there's a lot of athletic teams and athletic activities that you just don't get to play at all in an official game. You're just there to practice and support and move up the ranks the next year. So I really think that's cool. The idea that this rivalry between Salomar and for you and uh, Furu Furuya might actually have a point, right? And then that idea of it being a team sport. Because Furuya, I couldn't believe Furuya just left. He was like, I got what I wanted, so okay, bye. Like, that part shocked me, I think, the most out of these episodes is he just walked off. Because he's like, I got what I wanted, and now I want to practice, practice with you, Miyuki. And Miyuki's like, hold on, let's watch this game. And I like the idea that Miyuki's telling Furuya, he's like, yeah, you walked off because you did what you had to do. But this kid, Sawamura, is like being a leader. He's being a captain, being an ace. He's spurning his team on to do better. And you're just getting what you want and settling for it. So I thought that was really cool, the idea of it being a team sport. And then that line that they say, like, you may be, the coach tells Tamba and them, he's like, you may be a um, alone up at bat, but in the outfield on defense, or he told Asuka that, he's like, on defense, you're part of nine. So you got to work as a unit. It's like, oh, that's really, really cool. So yeah, I really liked these episodes. These three were really like a nice sequence of events right in a row there. And then, of course, Saumur is not deterred by you know, that seeming loss. He's only spurned forward saying that was awesome. Oh, so good. My face is like, my mouth muscles are like sore from smiling so much. <laughs> but yeah, this show so far, I'm digging it. I'm really curious where we're going to. There's been some players in the OP we have not seen yet, especially the, the catcher with the curly cues in his hair, um, that he's pretty prevalent in the OP. So I'm curious to know if him and some of the others we're going to see um, as this game goes on. It showed that some of the third years ditched out and was, wasn't even playing in the game. They were doing their own training. So I wonder how many of those there were and, and who also ditched practice. But yeah. And then the recruiter woman. She's uh, Salomura's biggest fan. I love it. She's like, I ain't denying it. So this is a really good set of reaction, guys. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. Um, please no spoilers, but feel free to comment about the episodes. And yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll be back next week with episodes 7, 8, and 9 of Ace of the Diamond. Bye.